And I think for the trust issue, it's something that us as entrepreneurs, like we need to look at ourselves first. So you can have a payment gateway and everything else, but if your website looks like junk and like you have no customer service and everything else, don't blame the payment gateway that nobody wants to buy anything on your website. It starts in the front end. You know, your store needs to look like a proper store. The website needs to function properly. You need to have proper customer support where people can answer questions before, during, and after the transaction. And the payments is just a tool, but like I think really the trust on the site, like you can go into the mall and there might be a terrible looking store, but they have like a credit card reader. No, people aren't buying because they don't have a good credit card reader in the store. It's because the store doesn't look right. It doesn't look like the kind of place you would want to buy from. So I think that's something important from an entrepreneur perspective to remember. But just real quick, so 30 seconds on everybody, real quick, is what's next? So I have a little questions for everyone. So Stephen, Visa makes lots of acquisitions around the world, mobile, mobile payments, all these different things or whatever. Real quick, 30 seconds, what's next? Uh, what's next for Visa? We're, I think Visa's now positioning itself further and further outside the US. So actually what you'll start to see is a lot of traction in developing markets, uh, we're investing very, very heavily. Uh, and so for Visa, it, it's really now actually taking on a much more global focus than perhaps it would have had before. So technology-wise, that means that from the acquisitions we're seeing recently, there's a lot of, lot of activity in the unbanked area, which is going to drive a new wave of uh, technological and actual payment growth, which is very exciting. There's a timer right there. You got 30 seconds, Martin. What's next? What are we going to see next? Uh, mobile payments, I think. Uh, I think that uh, what we're doing in Cashew is really looking at, at what, what, how we can work closer with uh, operators uh, on, on providing uh, convenient payment methods through the mobile phones. Uh, we have a few initiatives going, and I think that's going to be the next thing for us uh, to, to enable. So what's coming from Europe? What's great from a payments perspective that's coming here next, do you think? What do you think's next? Yeah, Martin stole it from me, but I was about to talk about mobile payment as well. I think mobile is a great tool which has a great penetration in the region and which is a way to transform cash into electronic money. And that's a great tool to operate payments. So I think telco carriers will play that game, banks will play that bank, internet players will play that game, and I think it will make a lot of sense. Paulo, when is CyberSource launching? When does CyberSource go live in the UAE? When is that coming out? We have a number of merchants already on, and I think they'll be growing quite significantly going forward. So I think from that point of view, uh, it's an exciting time. Also with regards to what's happening next, in general payment terms, I think NFC, near field communication, is a, is a play that we are in, investing heavily in. Also mobile payments, mobile wallets, cross-border remittances, P2P payments, domestically, regionally, internationally. But certainly in terms of e-commerce, I think there's expectation of high growth within the region, a high growth within the Gulf. And if there's any way that we can support you in launching your company, reaching your dreams, I'm more than happy to do so. Thank you. Ronaldo, who's, uh, who's Souk acquiring next? You guys are on a shopping spree. Who's Souk acquiring next? Actually, actually, for us, the next phase is really scaling the three businesses that we have. Uh, we just launched a very new platform in the market where it's much easier for sellers to put content on the internet, building Arabic catalogs for them, so it's much easier to present their products, as well as for our buyers to have a better shopping experience. We have a vast majority of products. We have about 200,000 products online today in, in only Sioux, and just enabling to the fine process of how customers choose and buy products, what we recommend for them is, is it. so for me, actually for all e-commerce in the region, it's all about let's scale. I mean, we're all scaling. How do you manage to keep your service up as you scale faster? So uh, we're going to have a bit of time for some questions. I think actually there's a question I'm going to direct that first and then we'll go to the questions. So Mohanda, you're gate to play, providing uh, payment services in Jordan. So. What does the landscape look like in Jordan? What are you guys able to provide to the, the startup entrepreneurs that are here looking to launch e-commerce? So how does that look from the landscape of a Jordanian perspective, specifically in terms of e-commerce right here? Good luck. Here, just use this. This is the... Hello? Thank you, Dan. 
Actually, uh, for Jordan, the, the problem that we have in Jordan that till today we don't have a credit card gateway that is, uh, let's say, 100% uh, compliant with for the e-commerce industry. What we have now is a prepaid card solutions that definitely will serve the digital content. But for e-commerce, unfortunately, uh, the main issue that we're facing for the startups in Jordan, even any e-commerce in Jordan, is the credit card gateway. Uh, because the percentage that we can take today, it's either from, uh, uh, let's say, PayPal outside Jordan or from uh, you know, aggregator for credit cards outside of Jordan is relatively high and it's not competing for our startup. So we wish if Visa and MasterCard can solve this issue for us. Thank you. Everyone? Yes, hi everyone. My name is Faisal al Sadun from Saudi Arabia. And uh, I'm coming up with a new startup soon in three months. The, I'm planning the launch in three months. Uh, it's, it's called akshak.com and I'm going to be in the C2C online. Uh, it's basically a C2C online marketplace. And my question to you, to, to, to the cashew uh, is uh, their, their fees are very high. 4% is really eating up the margins of an uh, e-commerce operator. Because as uh, Ronald said, it's, if you take 5% and then cashew takes another 4% from you, what's left for you as the merchant? So I think really cashew really need to uh, look closely and to evenly uh, uh, share the profits with the e-commerce uh, operator or the merchant. 